My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesiology resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. It's not uncommon for adult patients to ask me if they can just go off to sleep using a mask instead of having anesthesia through an IV. In this video, I explain why there's a general preference to induce anesthesia using IVs in adults, whereas in pediatric patients, it's not uncommon to use a mask instead. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. Let's dive in. Just a reminder that this video does not provide medical advice. It's just a YouTube video. If you need medical advice, please see your doctor. In general, the timeline of a given anesthetic can be broken up into three component parts. The beginning is the induction of anesthesia, which is the start, followed by the maintenance of anesthesia, which is the majority of the surgery or whatever case is going on, and then the last portion is emergence from anesthesia, where we're waking a patient up. The focus of this video is on the induction or the beginning of anesthesia where we're thinking about what techniques we can use to have a patient become anesthetized. Specifically in this video I'm talking about the induction of general anesthesia and if you'd like to see a video that I made reviewing what exactly general anesthesia is, you can check out a link that I put right here. Broadly speaking, induction agents for anesthesia can either be administered through a mask or through an IV. A mask induction for general anesthesia typically entails the use of either sevoflurane alone, which is a volatile anesthetic agent that can be inhaled, or sometimes that's supplemented with another agent called nitrous. It's important to point out that the concentration of nitrous oxide required to induce general anesthesia is actually so high that it wouldn't allow for the administration of oxygen as well. And for that reason, nitrous oxide can't be used alone to induce general anesthesia, but rather only in conjunction with another agent, which is most commonly sevoflurane. There are other volatile agents that theoretically can be used to induce general anesthesia, like isoflurane or desflurane, but those have significant drawbacks, like the amount of time that it would take for isoflurane, or the distinctly bitter and unpleasant taste associated with desflurane. The obvious benefit of using a mask to induce general anesthesia is avoiding having to stick the patient with a needle while they're awake, because of course that can be an unpleasant experience for anybody. Avoiding a needle stick is basically the only benefit that comes along with a mask induction. Not that patient comfort is insignificant, but it's also worth pointing out that having a mask in your face can itself be somewhat uncomfortable. That brings us into the drawbacks of using a mask induction, which are numerous. For one, it tends to be slower to induce general anesthesia through a mask than through an IV. And the reason we care about speed is that because as we're inducing anesthesia and especially using an inhaled agent, there can be a hyper excitatory phase where a patient gets disinhibited and might start moving around, kicking, punching, and not able to interact. So if you tell them to stop moving around, they won't listen because they're in a depressed state of consciousness even though they're hyper excitable. In addition to being dangerous for the healthcare providers who are taking care of the patient, it can also just make it harder to take care of the patient, which can in turn be dangerous for the patient himself or herself. A related drawback as far as the longer amount of time that it generally takes to do a mask induction is that there's also a more extended period of time where you have a patient who's anesthetized but without adequate IV access. IV access is extremely important to be able to administer basically any medication to treat any sort of complication that may arise. While there are some medications that can be administered intramuscularly or through the anesthesia circuit and inhaled, the majority of the medications that we have available in our anesthesia cart are formulated for intravenous use and also tend to be the most effective and fastest acting when administered IV. Another drawback of a mask induction is that if a patient has a condition called obstructive sleep apnea where the soft tissue in their mouth tends to collapse as they either go to sleep or are under anesthesia, well, if you're administering the anesthesia through the mask and it needs to be inhaled, but all of a sudden the patient obstructs and isn't able to inhale any more medication, then you can't continue to administer anesthesia unless you establish IV access. And even before general anesthesia is induced, 
we have no ability when we're doing a mask induction to administer any sort of anxiolytic agent like midazolam, which is routinely administered preoperatively to decrease anxiety levels. And that's most effectively administered when given through an IV. There are also some extremely needle-phobic adult patients who in some extenuating circumstances may be induced using a mask, but that's a decision that's up to the patient and the anesthesiologist. As I will be pursuing a pediatric anesthesiology fellowship, I will frequently work with pediatric patients. And one of the aspects of their care that's so important is making sure that they feel as comfortable as possible. Because a pediatric patient who's coming in for surgery at a young age has a higher likelihood of having some reason why they might need to continue coming back to the hospital at later points in their lives. For that reason, it's critical to make sure that their experience is as pleasant as possible so that they don't have a traumatic experience each time they need to come back to the hospital in the future. And that is a main reason why we prefer to use mask induction for pediatric patients wherever it's safely possible to do that. IV induction of general anesthesia is commonly accomplished using a medication called propofol which can also be used as a maintenance agent for general anesthesia. And it can also be used as a maintenance agent for lighter levels of anesthesia. Other agents that are sometimes used for the induction of general anesthesia include ketamine and atomidate. It's even possible to use midazolam to induce general anesthesia, but these are less frequently used medications and only have very specific indications. There are numerous benefits to an IV induction of general anesthesia. And the first benefit is that you already have IV access established, so if any other medications need to be administered for any reason, for example, anaphylaxis or bronchospasm, you already have an IV, which is going to be the most effective route to administer basically any medication. And because an IV induction tends to be such a rapid onset, you also do skip a hyperexcitable phase that can be dangerous for both healthcare providers and also patients. And even before induction of general anesthesia, anxiolytic medications like midazolam can be administered, even including in the preoperative holding area, before a patient gets to the operating room which can help people feel better. As far as drawbacks, the only real drawback to an IV induction is simply the discomfort that comes along with the placement of an IV. Depending on the size of the needle and the location where it's being placed and whether or not any local anesthesia was used, a needle stick can range from being not too bothersome to being pretty unpleasant. It really just depends on a variety of factors. So while anesthesiologists do not want to inflict any amount of discomfort on a patient, the discomfort associated with an IV placement does have to be weighed against the pros and cons of having an IV for inducing anesthesia versus the pros and cons of using a mask induction. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this video where I review some of the considerations for where to place an IV on patients for anesthesia. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.